Well, actually, that, that wasn't me doing any of the snoring at all. Uh, I've no idea why I'm in here, but apparently snoring is a major problem. And by the sounds of the laughter that's going on there, I guess a lot of people are very familiar with the sound because there are millions of self-confessed snorers in Britain and probably twice as many who won't admit it, as Shauna Hawthorne found out in Belfast city centre. No, definitely not. Dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Definitely not. I don't. Yes, he does snore. He snores like a pig. She does. Oh, no. He does. I do. Do you have a, a way of uh, stopping him snoring? Yes, I give him a nudge and tell him to turn over on his side. Try to suffocate him. But if he turns on his side, he's perfect. But if he lies on his back, it's really bad. Sometimes it Sometimes can waken you, you know. Sometimes it wakens me. Yes, it would wake you son with sudden snorting. <laughs> My granddaughter said she can hear him when she's in the other room, so he does snore. Jane snores. She snores. <laughs> oh, she keeps us up at night snoring. The child snores. Did you ever hear that like that? Now, <laughs> we'll hear this now. Gentlemen, no, ladies, ladies. Hands up whose husband snores. Come on. Where's your husband? <laughs> do you know you snore? Heard you, no. When does he snore most? When he gets round on his back. Round on his back? Mm -hmm. And he tends to know. What kind of a noise does he make? Oh, desperate. Go on, have we go. What do <laughs> no, you do? Do you know what you do? No. Yeah. It's not like that. Only on your back. Who else? Who else said it? Who else said it? Where's your husband? Oh, God love him. When does he snore? All the time. All? Every night? Mm -hmm. For no excuse, he snores? No excuse. Would drink be taken on any occasion? Possibly. Does he snore more with drink taken? Yes. Uh, Anybody else? One more? One. Oh, just beside. How does he snore? Or when does he snore? Oh, every night. Every night? Every night. Wakens himself too. Do you? <laughs> I don't. Well, I've been told all this, you know. No, no. He, I he don't hears know. himself and he wakens. <laughs> and he wakens. So a lot of you have that problem, don't you? It's, it's terrible, you know. That, that's, snoring can, can be more than just an embarrassment. It can disrupt your sleep or your partners. It can lead to marital discord. It can lead to separate beds. It can also be an early warning of health problems. Well, to discuss the reasons for snoring and some potential cures, I'm joined by Professor Michael Cinnamon, who's an ear, nose and throat specialist at Belfast City Hospital, Norman Gordon, who was a patient of his, and Alan Davy, who founded the British Snoring and Sleep Apnea Association. Give them a little welcome, please. <laughs> Good Alan, let me go to you. You are a snorer. You were a snorer. And so much so, in fact, that you went to your GP for help. Yes. Well, what kind of response did you get when you went to the GP? Well, quite good. Um, he, he, he was sympathetic and uh, he tried me on some uh, nasal sprays and that sort of thing. Um, ultimately, he referred me for surgery. Unfortunately, it wasn't very successful. It wasn't so. But do, do, they tend, do the medical profession tend to treat it as a, a little bit trivial? Well, yes, certainly call us into our helpline. Um, it do, would indicate that, yes. Uh, one of the most alarming phrases was... Uh, um, it would be wise to change your husband, you know. <laughs> it's not really good, it's not, not really good. But uh, in the main, I think uh, snoring is becoming a, a more... Um, people are becoming more aware that snoring is a curable problem and, uh, and therefore more is being done about it. But you actually went and did your own research on it and you actually yeah. found this British Snoring and Sleep Apnea Association. What is sleep... Well, I'll talk about sleep apnea in a moment. Okay. But, but why did you want to, to find, to establish an association? Well, when I was... Uh, I came to the conclusion that in order to solve my own problem, I needed to learn much more about it. So my, the first thing I did uh, was to go to the library to get a book on it, and there wasn't one. So I thought, well, that's, that's really crazy. Um, there must be an, asso an association that can help me because there's one, an association for everything. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed to find there wasn't one of those either. So I, I drew a bit of a blank on information. Um, Fortunately, my uh, librarian suggested a, a trip to a medical librarian and uh, she found me more reading matter than I could uh, hope, to, hope to get through in, in a short space of time. And uh, I started corresponding with uh, consultants all over the world about it and they encouraged me to uh, set this association up because there is a lot of information about it available. It's just that the general public don't really... Um, yeah, the benefit of mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Right, you've some aids with you, but I, I want to come back to the aids uh, a bit later. Professor Cinema, how does the medical profession view snoring? I think that uh, there, there is an increasing awareness of the problem now. It, 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 so many things in the medical profession take a long time 
to filter through from the, the people who uh, devise new treatments and uh, uh, new methods of, of overcoming problems down to the general practitioners who actually do the referring. Mm -hmm. But there is an operation there that, is can, an, that can cure or can help. There is an operation that uh, somewhere between 85 and 95 percent of people with severe snoring uh, will uh, have a significant improvement uh, following. How many operations have you done, for example, for this? We have now done about 40, 45. Over a period of what time? Well, I, f I first started doing this, I think, in about 1982, so, but I didn't do very many cases initially uh, because they were rather slow to come through. And what is the operation? What does it consist of? The operation consists of uh, removal of the, uh, the posterior, the, the, the back edge of the, of the, of the soft palate, including the, the little thing that hangs down the uvula. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the, 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 the purpose of this is to produce th uh, scarring in the edge of the palate, which will make it stiffer, and to remove tissue from the, the palate, which is floppy and is vibrating during sleep. But does everybody snore? Is it a natural thing to do? Um, I don't, I'm not sure that I could really answer that question. I think probably most people snore at some stage or another. But there are things that bring it on. Yes, there, there, are, there are certain things uh, like, for example, uh, obesity, over, being overweight is very definitely associated with snoring. Uh, drinking is associated with it. Told you. <laughs> And, and smoking. Th and those, smoking. Are, those are the three main things, though there are a number of others. And what also. about, a lot of people say, lying on your back? Well, <coughs> that, that, uh, th certainly there are people who, uh, whose snoring is much worse when they lie on their back, but for the, the sort of people that, that I'm dealing with, with, with what's sometimes known as heroic snoring, uh, this, is not, uh, this is not the case. They'll snore in any position, standing right. on their heads or whatever. Tell me what sleep apnea is. Sleep apnea is uh, a condition where, they, where they, the sufferer stops breathing uh, for a while uh, uh, during sleep. Uh, this is usually um, uh, defined as being a uh, cessation of breathing for more than 10 seconds. Uh, and occurring frequently throughout the night. That's the one, and then you sort of go <coughs> straight yeah, after. That's right. I think I might do that. Norman, you actually suffered from that. So my wife was able to tell me. Your wife was able to tell you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you, are, this snoring was so bad that it was, it was detrimental to your job, in fact. How, how, oh, yeah. how come? Well, it, it just leaves you, even though you've slept through the night, you're, you're completely drained, tired, a drained, listless, tired feeling all day. And uh, if you're, you know, any work at all, a driving, operating machinery, paperwork, anything like that at all, the head goes down, you're constantly trying to fight off sleep. So, in fact, you were waking up many times in the night because of this? Not, I wouldn't have been particularly waking up many times in the night. I could have gone through the night without, as far as I was aware, waking up. But at the same time, a few hours after I got up, I still had that tired feeling I would have gone back to bed again. So unbeknownst to you, your sleep pattern has been interrupted. You were waking up almost as tired as when yeah. you went to bed. Oh, yes. You went through the operation. Professor Cinnamon actually performed yes, the operation on right. you. How are you now? Oh, I would say probably 75, 80 percent improved. Improved? Absolutely. Oh, yes. W would you still snore? I'm told, my wife tells me that I still snore to a certain extent, but not to the extent that I did prior to the operation. But you now get up in the morning and you feed rested. Oh, yes. Right. I want to look at some of the, 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 the aids that we have. Perhaps, Alan, you could, you could talk us through some of them. What's, what's the classic sort of aids? Well, um, the things that normally one, one starts with, um, if we say obesity, well, take measure, more than 16 inches around the collar and you could be a snorer. So, <laughs> uh, because uh, it's, it's not obesity generally, it's, it's the fat around the, the, the throat which is... Make, make right. the, the, the throat smaller. Okay. So obesity. Smoking, well, you we'll just have to smoking. try and stop smoking. Right. Yeah. Then we get on to nasal stuffiness, and the easy things are things like this nose vent. Show me that. Which are little nasal nose, dilators. Nose vent. Yeah. And they you stick this up your nose? That's right. And what good does that do? Well, some people, their nostrils... Can I stick this yeah, up? Yeah, has it been up anybody else's <laughs> nose? No, it hasn't. <laughs> no, no, no. A no. bit more than that. Up a bit more? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. That's it. Let's see it. What's a filthy out of thing, isn't it? <laughs> that's it, that's the idea. All right. Now, how does it feel to breathe? Actually, quite well. Yeah. yeah. 
This yeah. is often the weakest link in the chain. Professor, what do you think of this? Is... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> there are a few people it helps. Not very many, I have to say. I can actually yeah. breathe quite clearly. Yeah. I, I think that the, the idea that, that uh, nasal obstruction is, is a, a, plays a major part in snoring is, is probably not terribly correct. I, th I think there are other factors involved. And certainly in the past, when we have operated on the nose to try and improve the airway, it has made very little difference okay. to snoring. Do you want that back? <laughs> no, <I don't> <laughs> let's, let's go dramatically no. to, to the big one. OK, well, this is nasal continuous positive airway pressure. Nasal continuous, continuous positive, positive airway pressure. And it's called CPAP for short. And it's the treatment of choice for obstructive sleep apnea. Um, it's uh, an electric machine. It's a bit like a back-to-front vacuum cleaner. And it blows air up this tube into this mask, which you put over your nose Nugget all night. How would you Just sleep with that on your face? Well, you, you, well, you definitely can. <laughs> and when you wake up in the morning, it's the best night's sleep you've had. You know, how if you're being that? robbed of, of, of how, how much, much is it? does that cost? This costs five hundred and ten pounds. How much does this cost? Um, five pounds ninety-nine for two of them. Five, five. Yeah. Very expensive even <laughs> a rubber, isn't it? Right, one last. Show me one last yet. Well. Um, French herbal nasal spray. Been working quite well. About 52% success so far mm -hmm. with that. So, um, quite good. Professor, do these things work? Um, f for some people they work, but for the majority they don't. Uh, and uh, for the for the really severe snoring, it's unlikely that uh, that any of these things apart from the nasal CPAP, which which does. Uh, help uh, quite a substantial proportion of people. The big one, yeah. that, 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 that yeah. actually can work. Yeah. But, but many people find it impossible to, to sleep with, yeah. with this uh, strap around their head. But I mean, if somebody did have a problem, can you go along and get this operation done on the National Health Service? Yes, you can? absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And yet, in all the years, you've only done 40 odd. Yes, although we, we've, we've done a lot more recently because the general public are more aware of it yeah. now, GPs are more aware of it, the other doctors are more aware of it, so we're getting more and more referrals. Right. So while we probably still laugh at it and titter at it, it is a, it is a serious medical complaint. It is, yeah. it is. Okay, and you're feeling much the better for it. Absolutely. Thank goodness for that. Okay, I want to mention uh, the Snoring Helpline because through your association, yeah. uh, people can actually phone up. And if you do have a problem, in all honesty, do phone the, the association. They have a snoring helpline, and the number on the helpline there is 0737 557 997. 0737 557 997. If you have a problem, I suggest you give that a ring. Thank you for that fascinating insight into our nightly nocturnal habits <laughs> that we don't know that we do. Will you please thank our three gentlemen for explaining it all to us? <laughs>